I call Gordon Lyons. Mr. Speaker, no tribute or eulogy, however smooth or eloquent, can do justice to the life and reign of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Since the news of her death last Thursday, many people in Northern Ireland, across the United Kingdom and throughout the world have felt deep sorrow at the passing of someone who, as it has often been said, we will never see the like of again. Some have even confessed to being taken aback by just how sad they feel about the passing of someone they had never met. I believe this great sadness that has been so evident across the country exists because we are beginning to realize what it is that we have lost. For so many people, she was the constant, the unchanging presence in all the seasons of our national and public life. For the last 70 years, she was there, opening parliament, appointing prime ministers, leading our nation in remembrance, awarding honors to the best of those among us, and even for some, dictating how quickly we ate our Christmas dinner so that we could hear the Queen in time. In an ever-changing world, in times of great national joy and celebration, and in times of sorrow, sadness, and grief, she was the anchor, one we could look to for stability, continuity, and comfort. In her first radio broadcast in October 1940, as the Battle of Britain raged in the skies above, the then, the then Princess Elizabeth encouraged the nation by saying, we know, every one of us, that in the end all will be well, for God will care for us and give us victory and peace. Eighty years later, she was still encouraging the nation by reminding us that better days would return and that we will meet again. On both of those occasions, and countless times in between. She spoke to us, but she also had the extraordinary ability to speak for us, reflecting our concerns and our fears and our hopes for a better future. In that respect, she had a unique capacity to bring us together. And as we witness the national outpouring of grief and love for her, we recognize that in death, she still unites us. We have lost our greatest ever monarch, a leader who was remarkable, not just for the longevity of her reign, impressive though it was, but because she was an exemplar of service, sacrifice, and devotion to duty, duty to the very end. That devotion to duty was as evident in Northern Ireland as anywhere else. When Her Majesty visited Northern Ireland for the first time as Queen, she addressed the Northern Ireland House of Commons saying, I assure you that I will always strive to repay your loyalty and your devotion with my steadfast service to you. That steadfast service to Northern Ireland has been evident throughout her reign, whether through dark and troubling times when she was a comfort to those who were mourning or through the extraordinary lengths that she went to personally to promote forgiveness and reconciliation among and between the peoples of this island. And of course, that loyalty from the people of Northern Ireland to their queen was not unique to the early years of her reign, nor did it wane as time went on. That devotion from her subjects in Northern Ireland was as strong, and if I may say so, was stronger here than anywhere else. I believe that was best demonstrated by the rapturous reception that she received in the Stormont Estate in June 2012 as part of her Diamond Jubilee celebrations. Mr. Speaker, whether we know it or not, we are all poor for her passing. And though saddened, our hearts are also full of gratitude. For a life well lived, for a lifetime of service and leadership, and for her faith, which guided her, sustained her, and shaped her into the person that we mourn today. Her late majesty frequently referenced how the teachings of Jesus were the bedrock of her faith and how it brought great comfort to her throughout her life. Her faith now brings great comfort to us as we are reminded that she is with the King of Kings whom she served. She has heard, well done, 
good and faithful servant. Mr. Speaker, we do, of course, recognize that first and foremost, there is a family in mourning. And we send our sincerest condolences to those who have lost a mother, a grandmother, and a great grandmother. We also recognize that this is a time of transition and change. The second Elizabethan era is over, but a new reign begins. We pay tribute to his majesty for decades of service thus far. And as he takes on his new responsibilities, our prayer for him is that which is found in our national anthem. May he defend our laws and ever give us cause to sing with heart and voice. God save the King. <laughs>